Hi, good morning and welcome to the ZP um, vlog and podcast. We do this every Sunday at 8am um, London time and today with is no exception and what this is is a sort of roundup of the news from Zimmer and Peacock for the news um, ending this week. So essentially let me sort of jump straight into it. So something that we're doing on Friday this week um, is we're going to do and I think we're going to do a live um, streaming demo of our garlic sensor. It's been a while since we've done any work with food sensing, um, but we've had some inquiries um, that demand a sort of demonstration, let's say, of the garlic sensor. So we're going to do a garlic sensor demonstration um, this Friday on, um, um, and it's the 25th of February, 2022. Uh, that will be streaming live on YouTube. So we do have a um, a landing page for this. Um, so if you look up live YouTube streaming demo of garlic, then hopefully you'll be able to find our landing page in there. There'll be a button and you can essentially come along and see that garlic um, demo on um, YouTube. So that's just a little bit of news from this for this week. Um, we did do our um, developer zone webinar on Thursday so every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time we do a webinar it's often very technical um, specifically for the members of our ZP developer zone I just want to say hello to Saran this morning nice to see you Saran um, and this week we did talk about doing uh, we have talked about the cortisol sensor we talked about um, heavy metals and we talked about detection of methylene blue so um, if you have technical questions of Zimmer and Peacock, then one of the best places to bring them to is the ZP Developers Forum because we answer those questions um, every week there. Now, um, ZP has also been invited to speak at a um, conference in Norway. Um, the conference, the title of the conference is the Sensor Decade. Now, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, organised by Sintef. Um, UIO and also Electronic Coast. So ZP is a member of Electronic Coast and through that we've been um, invited to give a talk. And so obviously we'll give a talk on um, electrochemical biosensors. I just want to say hi to um, Aftab. Um, nice to see you this morning, Aftab. Um, so yes, we will be giving a talk. That conference runs from the 1st to the 2nd of June 2022. And Zimmer and Peacock are delighted to be speaking at um, that conference. Now, some other news from Zimmer and Peacock this week. Um, this might be um, interesting to people like um, Aftab. ZP, we actually distribute a, um, a data logger system called Delta T. So Delta T, um, they make a data logging system and they're quite... Um, well known in the sort of R and D of agriculture, um, so they have something that will monitor the soil moisture and the temperature monitoring. And what we demonstrate um, in our video is at Zimmer Peacock, we actually distribute the um, Delta T instrument. You know, we've we've actually sold a few of these, and it has a file format that you can download from the software. And then you can actually upload that now into Julie. So it allows people to use their Delta T, which they can get via Zim and Peacock if they so wish. And however they get hold of their Delta T data, they can then actually upload that to Julie. And it just gives Julie that extra layer of functionality. It's probably worth saying that Julie, at this point, um, you can upload Autolab data. Um, so there's an Autolab system from Metro. You can upload their data. There's a brand of potential stats called CH Instruments, you can upload them. Um, there's a brand of potential stats called Palm Sense, you can upload that. Um, there's the Zimmer and Peacock um, Anna Pot potential stat range, you can upload that data. And obviously you can also do um, this Delta T instrument as well. So by the time you hear this, you watch this video, we'll probably be uploading a lot more, um, let's say, data from different instruments. So um, we put a video out um, regarding that. Now, something else that's very important to us is Zimmer and Peacock. Um, there's a lot of people who are very interested in 
really sensing things in the environment, um, sensing things in agricultural um, settings. Um, Zimmer Peacock, you know, we have a sort of very large range of biosensors. But something that's been maturing as well has been the fact that we now have um, many of you will be f or some of you will be familiar with our nitrate project and, th and through that project and productization we've ended up developing the electronics to read these biosensors and the electronics to actually transmit that data to the cloud and so as it matures and this will mature more and more with time people will be able to get a zp biosensor the electronics a base station the data will go to the cloud and then they will be able to pull data from that system, from the Julie cloud using an API, so that we see people, there will be a very sort of, they will be using the same hardware in terms of sensor electronics and, and maybe base stations for sending the data. Um, the data will be going to up to Julie where the raw data is filtered and calibrated and turned into actual information. But then other people will be able to pull upon that information via an API. An example would of that would be our nitrate sensor um, where we already have the sensors and the hardware and the base station the data already goes to Julie um, and now we're allowing other um, vendors to be able to pull upon that data using an API so that somebody will be able to be a um, an IOT based company you know let's say in India they're an IOT based company they want to monitor nitrate in a farming an agricultural setting in India they could buy the hardware from ZP uh, install the sensors install this hardware the data will go to Julie and then they can bring the data into their cloud via the API and it basically just stops um, a lot of reinvention of the wheel I think there's a lot of this going on which is complete you know which is fine but um, it doesn't necessarily move humanity forward um, now you could also make a similar argument for something like CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, where you have a wearable glucose sensor, you have the telemetry to the cloud, the cloud turns the data into information, and then you can pull upon that um, using um, using an API as well. So there's um, so it's just to say really that ZP, you know, we have built the entire stack of technology from sensor in the soil, for example, all the way to cloud and then actually allowing other people to get hold of that data using um, the API. Now this is um, PalmSense. We've mentioned PalmSense already that their potential stat um, is actually compatible with um, Julie and PalmSense and Zimmer and Peacock will be um, exhibiting together at the um, Symposium on Biochemistry and Bioenergetics um, that will be um, in Antwerp on the third to the seventh of april so the conference is called bez 2022 um i wish everyone really good health as hopefully we're starting to exit this covid19 so i have some good hope that we actually will end this this conference will end up happening and it'll happening from the third of april to the seventh of april 2022 and zp and palm sense will be exhibiting together um there seems to be an awful lot of news this week um, and in fact, we have some more news um, from this week. So I'll try to be efficient with everyone's time. I appreciate Saran and Aftab. Um, this might be interesting that Zimmer and Peacock, we did a visit the, um, there's a university near us called the University of Southeastern Norway, USN. And um, one of our engineers and our co-founder, Evan, uh, presented at um, USN. Um, there's a course there, it's an Erasmus course called SSI, Smart Systems Integration. And I have offered before now a member of the ZP Developer Zone. I said if you were able to get onto the SSI, then we would actually give you um, a bit of a grant, you know, to help you out, let's say, on the course. Um, so SSI, Smart Systems Integration, is a really good course. It, accept, it really um, attracts top talent from around the world. Um, one of the two gentlemen that's online today came to us probably via that course. Um, and so we really like it. We went up there and we wanted to meet the new um, intake to let them know that Zimmer Peacock existed. And we were we very much favoured that particular course. At the same time, if you're actually 
a member of the developer zone or you're following Zimmer and Peacock and you manage to get yourself onto that course, um, they do have, you know, very high standards. Um, let us know and, you know, we can have a conversation about your time on that course. Right. Now, this is, a, I think, a very unusual move by a screen printing company. Um, but at Zimmer and Peacock, we really believe in um, really sort of sustainable production just you know we want we want all processes in the end to be sustainable now one of the things that we're doing on on that sustainability part is we're actually um bringing used screen printed electrodes back into our facility we're retesting those screen printed electrodes in our facility and we're then essentially reselling them but for half the price so what we're saying is that we'll now the reason we're doing this is because at ZP we are aligned with the UN sustainability goals and in there it does say responsible con uh, consumption and responsible production and so we do make a point that if people return their screen printed electrodes to us we're going to give them um, a one month access to Julie and we're also then actually making them those electrodes they return to us as long as they pass a quality check um, we're going to resell them. So we're reselling a pack of hyper value screen printed electrodes that are recycled rather than it being sort of 199 euros for 200. We're making it 99 euros for 200. So we're hopefully really, let's say, bringing the price down on that. So it's both good for the planet. It's good for ZP and obviously also good for the collaborators as well that we're able to offer screen printed electrodes at those kind of um, costs. This is just something that um, we put up there this week. It was called the Zark element. At ZP, we do quite a lot of um, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. We have a few engineers who are really into it. And um, in order to understand sometimes some of the data that we have, you, you create something called an equivalent circuit. Um, and in that equivalent circuit, um, you can have these constant phase elements um, or Zark elements and so we wrote a little note um, around that just to explain it internally and also explain it um, to clients and collaborators as, as well. Now at Zimmer and Peacock we are offering up things like a sixth month subscription um, to Julie and if you do that you will get a free um, Galvano plot potential stat. We're also offering up a 12 month subscription to Julie and with that you'll get a Galvano plot potential stat and 500 screen printed electrodes. Um, we're also offering up a 12 month subscription to Julie and with that you'll get a free um, Sense It Smart potential stat and 200 electrodes. So it's very important because what we're really doing is selling the um, ZP subscriptions and we're giving away the potential stat and the electrodes for free so we do have quite a lot of deals um, regarding giving away hardware in if people are subscribing um, to Julie so we hope that is super interesting to people um, just a bit of news from this week um, androstenin is a hormone that you find in um, mammals and um, at ZP we have developed a sensor for it so we've put that sensor um, onto our website Androstenone is a hormone, so it's a sort of fairly small molecule, but um, something that we can detect. And then there's also, I think this is really interesting, we were also built a sensor for troponin I. Now, troponin I is a biomarker, quite a, well, it's a, it is a recognized biomarker for saying whether somebody had um, a heart attack or not. So it's a sort of cardiovascular biomarker. Um, I think the, the, the proper term for it is myocardial infarction. If somebody's had a heart attack, attack or in the clinical setting myocardial infarction, then troponin I, they test the blood and see what the levels of troponin I are. And if they're elevated, then they call that essentially a heart attack. And so ZP, we have actually developed a, um, a sensor for um, troponin I as well. So I'm going to do a quick, I say quick now, I'm going to do a, a little summary then of um, the news from Zimmer and Peacock um, in the last week, I think you can sort of tell there's been a lot. So we're going to do um, a live YouTube demo on garlic on Friday. 
Um, we did have a very good webinar this week. Um, we discussed heavy metals, cortisol, and methylene blue. We are speaking in June at the Census Decade, um, organized by Sintef, uh, in part by Sintef, which is a sort of quasi-government research organization in Norway. Um, Delta T is a range of Delta loggers. Um, that's interesting. Um, Aftab is just mentioning online that actually it, um, whether we did um, troponin I, well, he's done troponin I, and also is it Aftab based? And the quick answer is Aftab. It's not Aftab based. It was um, antibody based. But I'd be interested in hearing about the Af the, the Aftab base. So um, Delta T is um, a range of data loggers. The data can now be uploaded to Julie. ZP has really kind of completed the technology stack from sensor to cloud to API. So that is something now if we, you know if people inquire about it, we can definitely have a conversation about that. Palm Sensor and ZP together at um, BES 2022. That will be happening in um, April. And as I say, there's an awful lot of news this week. And then um, we put some. We went to Z, we went to USN this week, University of South. Eastern Norway, talk to the SSI course, and um, hopefully recruiting from there. We are recycling screen printed electrodes. Um, we explained the Zark element and cost of the phase elements. We've also given away free um, Sensit Smart Potential Stats and screen printed electrodes now with Julie. Well, yes, we have made the Androstino sensor and um, we've also made the Troponin Ice sensor. And specifically to Aftab's point, no, it's not. Aptima based it's actually antibody based but i would be interested to hear or send me a paper if you have it on your Aptima based um version of this so thank you very much um that was an awful lot there this week but thank you to saran and aftab and thank you for you guys who follow on later on on the podcast and the vlog and if you have any questions on zimmer and peacock um please don't hesitate to contact us all right take care guys speak to you soon bye bye